Hey, it's me, Tammy B, and this is my review for Scandal. All right, y'all, I'm still trying to get it together, but <laughs> I just wanted to start my video. Oh, my gosh, you guys. So, I don't know if y'all heard me say that I was going to try to plant a garden, but clearly I know nothing about planting a garden. So, I got this flower yesterday that I was thought was so cute. So, I was like, oh, I'll put it in my... um. I don't know what this little area is called, uh, you know, up here. And look what happened to the flower. <laughs> like, it's only been here for like four hours. So I'm I'm pretty sure there's some rule about uh, maybe not leaving flowers in hot cars or something like that. <laughs> so that's that. So I actually think I'm going to have to change the location. There's this huge moving truck behind me and there moving stuff first of all okay my company not too often do i see we hire whether it's inside or outside services you know brown people <laughs> so we we uh, redecorated this whole thing or whatever so there's some people moving some boxes and i was surprised to see a brother i was like okay good morning woo 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 and, you know, he was doing a little lingering stare, but I'm like, you know, I ain't even got time. So I just kept on walking. So then it was my lunchtime and I had to go to the bathroom. So when I went to the bathroom, they were in the bathroom, not using a bathroom, but we have a warehouse behind the bathroom. So they just needed the whole place open. So I was like, oh, dang, I guess I'll have to go to another bathroom. So I don't know. I <laughs> So then the black guy I saw earlier was like, oh, you need a bathroom? It's one right here. And I'm thinking like, okay, well, first of all, I work here. Even though technically I did forget that that bathroom was there because I never go to that one. And then I don't know, did it just be a, an attraction to all the black people? So then the other black guy who's working with them comes out of the bathroom that I was just trying to go through. And so the first guy was like, uh, you working hard? And I was like, you guys are working hard. I was like, thank you. And then he was like, are you working hard? And I was like, I sure am. So then the other black guy, I don't know if he just heard the conversation or he seen me that qu as quick as it was for me to go in the bathroom, see people in there and was out. Somehow that second black guy just came and ran to jump in the conversation. Mind you, they, they're a little older. They're a little special ed or whatever. And so I was just like, oh, gosh. So now we all talk. And then the second guy was like, no, you ain't working hard. And they just kind of laughing. I'm like, look, y'all, we can't be doing this. <laughs> we can't be taking impromptu breaks. All the black people that's in this building in the hallway. Like, I don't want to be rude, y'all. But I'm trying to help y'all out. Like, they usually don't hire y'all. So don't be trying to, first of all, get at me. Secondly, try to take an extra break in the hallway or whatever but that's that you guys so let me go to a a, a different location without all this extra that's going on and i'll be back for scandal <laughs> all right you guys so scandal um season five episode 19 title buckle up so the intro was everything sally langston and her little liberty bell report so she was talking about two women duking it out and it was just so amazing because on one hand sally was talking about the two women duking it out being melly and susan as in both just trying to have a pissing contest for the whole republican party uh nomination or whatever but at the same time the duality was amazing because we also saw that although melly and susan are duking it out they're perspective chief of staffs are duking it out as well which is olivia and abby you guys so uh olivia is going in for melly and abby is going in for susan so it was so cute um you know they are all at this hotel for whatever reason i guess getting ready to go you know campaign or whatever so it shows this scene with abby and olivia both walking down the hallway all super fast trying to get to their candidate first and you know it shows them both making calls and pulling strings for their candidate so that was a cute little duality with um millie talking about um uh, oh am i in disguise uh, whatever about Millie about the two women duking it out so um there was this one scene where 
Quinn and Olivia and Abby, all three were waiting for the elevator or whatever. So Olivia and Quinn get in and they all taking up all the space to make it seem like there's no room for Abby. And Quinn is looking like, you know, let her get in. And, and Olivia's like, oh, she could take the stairs. <laughs> I was rolling. But at the same time, I'm like, dad, Olivia. But, you know, I get it. But I thought that was kind of funny. If I was Abby, I would have rolled myself, my stuff right on in there. Like, uh, no, because I'm pretty sure they on the penthouse suite. I'm not about to take no stairs, even if it is going down. I must be in this guy's box. Why is he doing stuff by me? Um. Okay, let's see if he come back to something. Why is he buckling his fly? Oh, we want my paper. So anyway, you guys. So I just don't like little body. <laughs> So, um, boom, they're on his way to the governor of Atlanta's dinner. They're prepping Susan on what to say. They're prepping Millie on what to say. So they are um, in the plane, you guys. So everybody's supposed to leave. Fitz have a plane. I think Susan have a plane. And I guess Millie have a plane. And... Abby, I mean, Olivia realized that their plane is not moving. So Abby is like, uh, or Olivia is like, what's the hold up or whatever, y'all? So Abby tried to pull her trump card. She tried her best to be this good chief of staff or whatever, you guys. So Abby plays the trump card and knows that this governor don't like nobody to be late. So Susan is already on her way out there. So Fitz is going too, I guess, just to go. But there's this rule that no other plane can leave if the president's plane is i'm about to move because these people are just like annoying me um so sorry got the speed bumps right there for real so whatever abby trying to play some games and basically get olivia and her candidate melly late or whatever so she's not having it she called abby and like you can't do this da 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 da, da. and abby was like basically i can you know, so Olivia's pissed off and she's just trying to wait Abby out or whatever. But uh, uh, Millie is like, look, I don't have time for these shenanigans. <laughs> so, um, the Black Harrison, the new Black Harrison tells Abby or tells Millie, like, why don't you go talk to the president or whatever? First of all, I am so here for the new Black Harrison and uh millie getting together first of all she could use a boo and secondly i think they kind of cute together so first of all when millie figured out she was gonna be late she's freaking like freaking out like oh my gosh no da -da 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 -da. and the new black harrison was like millie calm down boom he silenced her with the quickness i was like okay you can go ahead and put you in check as much as a strong black independent woman like to be all on our own and calling shots it ain't nothing sexier than a man who could just get you a check maybe that's just me but hey so anyway i thought that was cute and then um like i said it was the new black harrison who told um Millie to go talk to Fitz so she just went outside and went to go talk to Fitz and Fitz came down there and they had a little one-on-one -on -one with the paparazzi all watching or whatever and you know Fitz told her that he did it she was doing a good job or whatever and um basically she was like look I need you to get I need you to move the plane or whatever and at first I think Abby lied to Fitz and told him it was a real reason that they wasn't leaving I don't think Fitz knew that it was just because Abby was in a pissing contest was live or whatever so they had a heart-to-heart -heart moment and Millie ended up saying some smart comment about you know Olivia will kill Abby but just you know using that phrase because she know that Olivia is a boss but Fitz was like, hey, like, don't play, Millie. Don't be selling, saying those killing words in front of all these people because they might can read our lips or whatever. She was like, what are you talking about? And then Fitz was like, you don't know that Olivia killed, uh, what's her boo name again? Oh, Andrew. And she was like, oh, no, I had no idea or whatever. So let me go back a little bit. Um, like I said, they going to see the Florida governor, right? So the Florida governor came to David and was like, look, I know Susan Ross is your boo. 
so and I know you the district of attorney or whatever so how about you drop this little case that I need or that I'm involved with this little sugar cane case and then I'll go ahead and pick your boo Susan because really I want to pick Melly because she's a boss she has more experience and she's more firm but you know if you do that favor for me I'll pick uh your boo Susan and David was like no I'm not doing that and you know susan and david is kind of broke up he's sleeping all on the floor and stuff and i was like bye that hotel room is plush enough that he could sleep on the couch and i know y'all high up because they worried about oh what will people think as long as people see y'all going in a room together um shouldn't that be enough y'all should be high up where people shouldn't be taking pictures through the window oh you the vice president remember presidents don't be doing all those open windows so unless it's on purpose so I'm pretty sure he could have slept on the sofa bed or I'm pretty sure that's a suite that had more than one room. And then side note, I was like, OK, not to get all super, um, what do you call it, like um, strict rules or whatever. But I was like, isn't it funny how um, Elizabeth North was like, oh, it'll look funny if people don't see y'all sleeping together. And I'm like, well, that's so ironic. Cause wouldn't, isn't it supposed to look funny if people did see you guys sleeping together? Like they're not married. She has a young daughter, you know? So I'm like, that's kind of funny how it's like, as soon as you go together, like you have to sleep together. Like, is that what they trying to say that America is promoting? Like, I just felt like if I was Susan, I would have been like, no. We not sleeping together. We just we just start going together, and I have a young daughter, so no, I'm not about to have David all up in my bedroom. Like, so that was kind of dumb to me or weird, but you know, I guess this whole shacking and premarital sex stuff is like the norm now. But I was just like, that was kind of funny to me. I don't know if it was funny to anybody else. Um, so. Like I said, the scene with Melly and Fitz, it was epic to me. They like you know, Olivia was just like their bond in a sense. So the fact that they ain't been talking in months and the first thing that they talk about when they finally talk is Olivia talking about is she sleeping? Is she eating? I don't know why. I just would be still so pissed that Fitz cares that much. And I would still be so pissed that Fitz knows what to do to make her feel better. Make sure she runs. Make sure she eats. Like, oh, you was that involved in your side chick's life that you know her ins and out like that would bother me so much but hey you know millie is a whole nother uh down chick so i guess um but that is another reason why i am team millie and team olivia like okay abby is kind of getting on my nerves by doing all of these things but at the same time hey like she said olivia been doing tricks all these years i learned from her so now that i'm in a position i got the right to do tricks too and i definitely agree with that so i'm kind of happy to see abby stand up especially knowing that she used to be fat and used to be abused so i like seeing a woman take her power back when she once was so po broke and lonely and like i love abby's hair too so oh um, i'm here for abby but i guess it's because she's going against olivia that kind of has me like girl <laughs> or like no or whatever but like i said i don't know maybe just because millie like hey she clearly wants it like i dealt with fit shenanigans when we was married and hey I was woman enough to deal with it and even, you know, get the best person to run my campaign, even though she was my husband's side chick. And now I'm doing what I can to get to this dinner. So I'm here for Melly and her just going for what she want her, her own goals as an individual woman. So, Hey, um, but whatever. So that works and millie gets fits to move the plane so olivia all pissed off like why did you go do that da, 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 da. i don't know why olivia was mad maybe because she ruined abby's pissing contest or her pissing contest with abby or whatever um so millie was like well you didn't do nothing so unless you got a better idea bye so of course you know you can't challenge olivia so olivia knew that even though Fitz was moving the plane they were still gonna be late so olivia called Fitz and was like hey come back and go to the dinner with Melly. So um, they show up at the dinner late. Like even the lady, because uh, the lady was like, oh, Millie's here. And uh, the secretary's like, oh, Millie's here. But the governor was like, oh, no, well, tell her she could leave because we don't do uh, lateness. And next thing you know, Fitz and Melly walk in. 
So, of course, she changed her tune, like, oh my gosh, Mr. President, nice to see you. Have Nelly come sit right here by me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, shoot, dang it, it's 2.30, my time. So, anyway, um, so who else was confused? Oh, Elizabeth North was asking Abby, like, dang, so Fitz is supporting Millie now? And Abby was just so pissed off, like, long story. So, basically, you know, Olivia ended up coming through for Melly after all. But, um, it was just a lot of drama behind it. And Quinn even banged on Olivia. Like, what's the deal? Like, why are you doing Abby like this? Like, you guys can come together and do better. So, of course, Olivia got mad at Abby or Quinn and Hug. Like, I shouldn't need to explain to you what I'm doing. You know that our rule is to go over the cliff. Or you know that our rule is to never get crossed and da 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 so it don't matter if it's abby or not like i shouldn't have to explain y'all been gladiators long enough and don't question me or whatever um michael y'all so cyrus's husband you guys so cyrus husband finally confronts him like look are you sleeping with tom or not so cyrus like what like oh who you been talking to because i guess uh Cyrus know his little cheating game tight enough that shouldn't nobody know that he cheating with Tom. So, I guess he is cheating with Tom. Cause, well, okay, yeah, I guess we knew that when we saw them laying up in the bed. But, like I said, even when we saw Tom come out the shower with his shirt off, I still wasn't 100% convinced that they were sleeping together. I thought they may have still been working together. Because look about look at all that time they was at the White House together. I'm like, why wouldn't they boo then? But, hey, I guess Cyrus already had a boo then. Um, so Cyrus knows that means Vargas brother has been talking to Michael. So they basically trick, um, Vargas's brother, Cyrus, you know, Michael has a whole bunch of information on Cyrus that Vargas, the brother wants. And so Michael ended up calling Vargas was like, here's the info on, Cyrus, there you go. He finally getting what he deserves, like yada, yada, yada. So I guess it was fake. Like, this is the part that I'm kind of confused on, like Michael. Like, was he on Cyrus' side or not? Or did Cyrus, I don't know. I kind of felt like Michael was team Cyrus. Like, maybe Michael did confront Cyrus, and Cyrus was like, look, boo, you just my boo, but yeah, you my husband. But first of all, you're not good in the bed, and this was arranged marriage anyway. So I just need you to fall back. Take care of the little black girl and don't be asking me questions about my whereabouts. Just play the kept husband or whatever. So at first I thought Michael wasn't going to go for it. But then we find out that the little flash drive that he gave Vargas' brother was bogus. Like none of the info ever loaded. But then we see on the news that it finally came out that the governor Vargas daughter has cancer. And it was a picture of him and his cancer daughter released on TV. So Cyrus got proof that it was the brother Vargas who released it. So the governor Vargas fired his brother. They was like, you knew I didn't want to come out about my daughter. I don't want to gain this president from sympathy points. So boom, brother, you're fired. So Cyrus is all happy. You know, he got the brother out the way, which he wanted to do. And then, like I said, from my opinion, you know, his, even though his husband had confronted him, he got his husband to help him out when he needed. So he goes home to kind of let his husband know, hey, it all worked out, only to find out that the husband then packed up all his stuff and took the little black girl with him. I'm like, can you do that? But I mean, I guess if you marry, you can. But I was just like, dang, that's crazy. So then I'm confused. Like, so that made me think, well, maybe... Maybe the husband didn't know that the flash drive wasn't going to work. Or maybe, you know, maybe he was just like, okay, you're right. You know, I'll help you get rid of the, the crazy guy, but I'm still leaving. So that's the part I'm confused on. So if you guys know about that part, just kind of let me know. But I guess it's kind of left open on purpose. You know, I guess they can't do the whole story in one episode. So all we know is Michael gone and he took little Althea with him. I, I can't remember that girl name for nothing. <laughs> but I'm glad we got to see her. She grew up a little bit and it looked like somebody... I ain't gonna even say that. Before the teen naturals come after me. <laughs> um, Yeah, so... 
I don't know, you guys. So Huck finally confronts Liv. Like, look, Liv, what's going on? You being mean to Abby? How about you just fall back? You're not a killer. You ain't really recruit since you, uh, since you killed Andrew. Like, you know, you need to fall back. And Olivia was like, look, I don't need to recruit. It feel good to kill somebody. He was getting on my nerves anyway. I ain't slept better since I killed him. So, I'm cool with killing him. So Huck was just standing there. And she was like, why are you staring at me? He was like, I'm waiting for the rest. I loved that scene. I was like, Huck know her so well. And at first when he was uh, looking at her, and, you know, she was going off, like, it felt good to kill Andrew. I ain't, uh, That was the best sleep I got. Nah, 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 nah. When he was looking at her, I thought he was looking at her like, oh, my gosh, you're becoming your, your dad. You're becoming command. But, no, he was looking at her like, okay, you saying all that, but I know you enough. There's something else. Like, what is it? So, finally, Olivia's like, you know, I wanted to be with Jake, but then my dad said if I got with Jake, he was going to kill him. So, I'm kind of sad that I can't be with Jake. Um, so, that was that, you guys. So, after everything happened with the governor, guess who ended up winning the state of Atlanta? Hollis Doyle. So the governor even went on TV and told the whole state of Florida that she was going to endorse Susan Ross. Oh, and let me tell you, let me backtrack a little bit, even though I said I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> so remember when I said the dinner went well, like even though Millie was late because Fitz came with her, um, she let Millie come in. And her and Millie got, got to twiddling. First of all, at the beginning of the dinner, the governor Hollis Doyle was all kiki and Susan Ross was just quiet and pissed off. I don't I forgot why she was acting that way. Um, but even when Melly came, then the governor of Florida and Melly was all kiki, and so it seemed like she was gonna pick Melly. But then Susan Ross interrupted her and said something like, Yeah, whatever, Governor. What you saying sounds nice, but I'm here to bust your bubble because whatever you talk, that little law you passing, you only passing it because it's going to bring you money or, you know, whatever she said. But she basically stepped up to the governor and she looked kind of stank. She didn't have no smile. She wasn't joking. And the whole dinner table got quiet. And both Abby and Liv had to pour them a drink after that. So to us, it kind of looked like Susan even further ruined her chance. And I think David was in there when that happened. So we were surprised that the governor got on the newsstand and told everybody, like, I'm voting for Susan. Like, she don't take no crap. She say what she mean. And that's my kind of girl, so I'm voting for her. So to me, it had looked like, oh, at first we was all scared for Susan. Like, dang, you stepped up to somebody whose vote you need. Now you blew it. But then when the governor got on TV, she made it seem like, oh, because she stepped up, I picked her, right? But come to find out, after that, David went to the governor and went ahead and dismissed whatever case the governor had asked her about in the beginning. But even after the governor's endorsement, the rest of the state still didn't pick Susan. So David didn't compromise his integrity and Hollis Doyle ended up winning anyway i was like oh my gosh so of course hollis doyle all boasting in trump in true trump fashion talking about come on gals like i like a pissing contest more than the next or what he said i like winning more than the, the next but it's no fun without a little challenge or whatever basically saying like you know millie and susan so busy going back at it at each other like the, he let they let him win the race so i was like oh gosh he's getting on my nerves so that's it, you guys. So Livy show Liv, no, Abby showed up at Liv's job, like, or back at Pope and Associates. And, of course, Olivia was like, what are you doing here? And Abby was like, look, why are you so angry at me? I understand, like, if you angry because after you killed Andrew, I tried to shut you down. That's one thing. But she was like, I feel like you was mad at me even before that. When everything was good, before Andrew had even got out, I had came to you to, t to let you know, like, oh, I might get fired. And she was like, instead of helping me like you would, like a friend or your other clients, all you said was, oh, you can come back and work for me. So she was like, why? On one hand, you say you think I deserve it. But on another hand, I feel like you're not doing nothing to really help me take charge so that's when olivia told her i want my white house back and at first when she said that i thought she meant like she want to get back at with fits but i think now i'm thinking what she meant was like oh okay like i was running a white house under fits like everything 
was ran by me but because i fell in love with him and then i broke up with him that blew me running the white house but now that i'm working with millie i want millie to win so i can get back in the white house and then i can run it again and even though this is Liv talking saying even though you as my friend abby i want you to win and i think you deserve it i'm not about to let you win and susan over me like i still pick me so, yeah, like, we friends, but, hey, you with Susan and I'm with Millie, so I'm still going to try to do anything to get Millie to win. So, you know, that's re where it's really coming from. So, Abby actually understand that, and then they realize, like, okay, at the end of the day, like, they both want to win, but right now they both got an equal enemy, and that's Hollis Doyle. So now Olivia and Abby are going to work together to get Hollis Doyle out the picture, and then I guess it'll be up to them to best woman win over Millie versus Millie slash Olivia and Susan slash Abby. So that was it, you guys. That was the episode. It was titled Buckle Up. And I'm assuming, yes, it was a wild ride, but I'm thinking like maybe because of the whole airplane thing and the seatbelt thing, buckle up, but also probably the whole wild ride of, you know, first it seemed like uh, Millie was going to win Florida. Then it seemed like Susan was going to win Florida. But then Hollis Doyle ended up winning. And then the whole back and forth with Cyrus. Like, was Michael against Cyrus? Then he was for Cyrus. But then he disappeared with the kids. So, I guess that's why I was called Buckle Up. So, all right, you guys. Um, you know what's up. Give me a thumbs up on this video. Go ahead and check me out on Twitter at Tammy B underscore. And I will see you in the next review. All right, bye.